Hi there. I'm so glad you're here today. Let me take you through a relaxing day in my life as I share with you the eight things I've learned about how to regulate our emotions. To clarify, regulating does not mean suppressing. Emotions are neither good nor bad. They're just neutral signals that tell us something deeper about ourselves or the world around us. These eight mindfulness skills will help you regulate your emotions rather than being constantly overwhelmed by them. You'd be surprised by the amount of adults who haven't yet been taught how to regulate complex emotions such as shame and disappointment. These skills have made a world of difference in my life, and I hope that they will help you flourish in your emotional life as well. Number one, find your reasons. The best time to learn how to regulate your emotions is before you're triggered. So while you're here, take out a journal or notepad and write down all the reasons why you want to be in control of your emotions. My initial reason for taking this more seriously was because my husband and I have been talking about having kids, and we didn't want them to inherit any of the harmful emotional habits that we unknowingly carry. As it turns out, we both struggled with regulating complex emotions such as guilt, shame, disappointment, and feelings of abandonment. Your reasons might be because you want to have a sound mind, live a happier life, or just simply become more Christ-like in the way you handle yourself. Whatever it is, list out these reasons and visit them often to remind yourself why the battle is worth it. Number two, learn your triggers. Our brain's job is to help us survive and a critical part of survival is being able to detect threats. However, things go awry when the initial danger is gone, but our brains remain hypersensitive to any level of threat. This tends to happen to people who have been profoundly hurt by something before, maybe without even realizing it. The result is that they might live their lives with constant anxiety because they don't truly feel safe in the world anymore. It doesn't take much to set them off because they perceive everything as a potential threat. If this is you today, you know that this is no way to live. Start by learning your triggers. What specific situations make you feel unsafe, anxious, or angry? Create a list of all the triggers that have been setting you off balance. This is the beginning of your breakthrough. Number three, identify your emotions. Once you have the list of triggers, go through each scenario and identify the emotions that you feel. Be as honest to yourself as possible. If you struggle with finding the right words for how you feel, search up an emotions word bank to help you identify these feelings. There are so many words out there that might describe your emotions better than just happy, sad, or mad. The Abundant Life Devotional Journal also includes an emotions word bank for this very reason. The more specific you can get with your emotions, the easier it will be for you to unravel your thoughts and understand yourself better. Please note that while you list out your emotions, it is critical that you don't judge yourself for feeling these things. Like I mentioned before, emotions are neutral signals that tell us something deeper about ourselves and the world around us. Rather than judging yourself for feeling a certain way, Try to be an observer of those emotions instead. Number four, investigate your emotions. Based on the triggers that you've listed and the emotions that follow suit, it's time to get to the bottom of these emotions. Next to each trigger that you've listed, try to remember as far back as you can 
about the very first time you experienced that emotion. For example, one of my emotions was fear of abandonment. The very first time I remember feeling this way was the period of time after my father passed away and my relationship with my mother changed. I suddenly felt thrusted into a big scary world by myself and made to sink or swim. These feelings worsened after I got involved in the wrong relationship. You can watch my story in detail via the link in my description, but the point is to dig deeper and investigate where your triggers originated. That way, you can invite Jesus to heal that deep-seated trauma and truly move forward. This will be one of the most difficult parts of the process because you'll uncover wounds that you've wanted to forget about. But believe me, they won't magically go away on their own. If left unchecked, these wounds can fester and infect all areas of your life, causing anxiety, depression, and all kinds of unhelpful habits. It's time to investigate your emotions, acknowledge your wounds, and help them heal. Number five, understand your power. In every human relationship, each person wields a certain amount of power. It is what we do with that power that determines the health of our relationship and our own emotional health as well. Our power is only meant to be exerted over ourselves, not other people. Acknowledging your power is a tremendous first step to regulating your emotions. What you say and do can profoundly impact other people. And those who lack emotional regulation can abuse their power by exerting it over others rather than themselves. Proverbs 25 verse 28 says, A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. This ancient word of wisdom speaks to the person's lack of boundaries. By understanding your power and using it to control yourself rather than other people, you are not only protecting yourself from harm, but also those around you. You'll be like a fortified city, safe, orderly, and just simply pleasant. Number six, take a pause. Dr. Romani, a clinical psychologist who specializes in narcissistic personalities, said, There actually is something a narcissistic person themselves could do to help fix these patterns. They can actually wait a minute. That moment of pause seems to be just enough to regulate. But unfortunately, research suggests that when the perceived threats come too fast, The person higher in narcissistic superiority reacts faster. Pausing and mindfulness might be the single most useful approaches in addressing narcissism, but are also the hardest skills to acquire, especially for people with these personality styles. Whether we have narcissistic traits or not, Our brains always need a second to adjust and regulate after we've been hurt in some way. The next time you feel that pang of anxiety or frustration, practice pausing by taking out your journal, jotting down a quick prayer, watching a video, or just taking a quick walk. Give yourself the chance to process before you respond. It's all part of becoming a secure and emotionally mature adult. Number seven, study healthy responses. It's not enough to just recognize unhealthy reactions. You should also study healthy responses as well. This creates a wellspring of knowledge that your brain can choose from when dealing with triggering situations. I recommend the following books for learning how to respond to difficult scenarios. I'll link them all in my description below. Finally, number eight, practice urgently. Practice every day. The best time to practice mindfulness is before your triggers begin. 
This is your time to study healthier responses, taking pauses throughout your day, investigating your emotions, and just being more mindful of your impact on yourself and the people around you. These eight tips are all acquired skills, which means that you can actually lose them if you don't practice them enough. Make it part of your routine to journal, pray, and reflect. Allow your mind to heal so that you can confidently live the abundant life that God had always intended for you. If any of these eight tips resonated with you, please let me know in the comments below. I'll keep you all in my prayers as always, and I'll see you in my next video.